Hi students, I wanted to give you a little introduction to using Octave. We're waiting for our MATLAB licenses. So this is a good opportunity to show you Octave. Um, when you download it, install it, and run it, it looks like this. Um, this is a lot like MATLAB. It's actually a free open source version of MATLAB, basically. Uh, there's a little bit that's different, but pretty much it's the same. So we're gonna use them um, interchangeably. So this way we can get started. Um, a lot of the windows are going to be the same for MATLAB, but um, just to kind of introduce you. Um, first of all, you can see my cursor is at the command window. And now this is where I'm going to be typing in um, basically my conversation with MATLAB. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called M and I'm going to assign it a number. So this is just like we talked about in the lecture. So what happens, you'll notice, is that I'm having a conversation with MATLAB. I type in m is equal to 3 and it says m is equal to 3 back to me. If I don't want it to um, say that back to me, like oh, I already know m is equal to 3, I can put a semicolon right here. And what that does is that just gives me the cursor again. Um, it's not going to repeat back to me um, what happened. So that's my variable m. You'll notice that um, I'm typing stuff in the command window. But over here in this workspace, there is a variable created called m. The type is a double. And remember in the lecture, we talked about type double is for numbers. Um, it's 64 bits. It has to be that big so we can store um, basically any kind of number that we might throw at it. Um, the dimension is one by one. So that means that we just have um, one number. And this is. Um, in matrix form, right? So this is basically just like this is one memory cell um, and that contains one number. When we talk about arrays where we have lists of number, then um, these dimensions will change. Um, it gives you the value that's stored in the memory cell and for us that value is three. So we can actually reuse this variable. We can assign it something else. So, so suppose I want to change the value to two. So then you can see the value here is going to change in this workspace. Down here we have a command history window. This is going to have all the commands that I'm typing in. This is actually super handy because when you go to um, write your code and in you, when you're in the prototyping phase, um, if you do want to run it over and over again and you're going to change something and run it, change something, rerun it, it's nice to be able to go up here and just copy and paste rather than have to type everything in. Um, every time you want to run it. So um, let me show you once we have created this double variable m. We don't have to declare it as a double in the command window. MATLAB just knows that if we assign it a number that it's going to be um, a numerical storage container of type um, double. So we can do it again. Let's make n and let's assign it the number 5. Um, this time I'm not going to put the semicolon and then I get um, MATLAB spits back out to me that n is equal to 5, um, in this case, octave. So now over here in my workspace, I have m and I have n. And I can see the value. Now what I want to do is I'm going to make a new variable. I'll call it x. And in x, I want to store the sum of m and n. So I can just do m plus n. If I don't put a semicolon, um, Octave is going to say, okay, x is equal to 7. So it executed this. It has a conversation back with me. It says, I did what you told me to do, and here's the answer that I got. And that's really good. Um, so if I wanted to, say, change the value of n, let's say instead um, n should be 6 instead of 5. And now I want to repeat my computation of x is equal to m plus n. I can actually just hit the up arrow key until I find the line of code that I want to rerun. So I'm just going to press up two times until I find my um, x is equal to m plus n and hit return. And now it redoes the computation, but it goes and looks in memory where I stored the variable n. It finds the value, it redoes the computation, and it tells me what it was. Um, the next thing I want to show you is, suppose I didn't, um, I didn't do my computation m plus n and store it into x. What if I just did m plus n? So if you don't have a place to store your answer, 
um, Octave is going to create a variable for you and by default the name of that variable is ANS, for, short for answer. So if I hit return you can see it makes this new variable ANS and it sets it equal to that 8. It appears over in my workspace now too, that ANS. So every time I do this, um, say I want to do, I'm going to just use this as a calculator, I'll say what's 12 minus 4, actually 12 minus 3, then ANS gets rewritten with a new value 9. Okay, so it's not going to create a new ANS for us, it's just going to reuse that ANS variable and set it equal to the value of this new computation that we did. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about is in the lecture we talked about um, the other uh, the other very common variable for MATLAB and Octave is a char and that's short for character so that's like a letter um, if we wanted to create a variable um, it doesn't have to be a single letter I can actually call my variable something like name and I want to store in name my name. So let's just start with the first letter of my name. For MATLAB and Octave, we don't use double quotes as we would if we were doing like a quotation in a report or something like that. We would use a single quote. So I'm just going to put in a capital M here. And now if you look in my workspace, the, the name of my variable was created. It's called name and um, this is case sensitive. The, the class, right, so the type of this is a char. It's a one by one and the value is um, an M. Now check this out. I can rewrite name to be my entire name, Nisha. And now if you look at the workspace, name gets reused. Now the dimension of this is a one by five. So this is going to have um, five elements in it for M-I-S-H-A, right? I have five letters or five chars and the value is um, M-I-S-H-A. So you guys know from doing that first um, icebreaker activity in the discussion that this is actually, each one of these characters has a binary representation in Unicode ASCII. So what this does is this is going to um, basically, if I type in these letters, these letters get encoded into binary and stored in memory and the location of that memory address is denoted by um, or, or yeah kind of labeled by this name variable. Um, so this is just kind of I wanted to show you how this works how we would sort of use this this commando com command window is used as our um, our like conversation workspace. So we can type stuff in as if we were using a calculator and then we have this sort of um, running total of keeping track of all the variables that we create and what their values are. Here we have um, a running history of all the commands that we've used. Um, over here also we have this file browser. So if we're saving this in a particular place and we can have the um, file structure here and the path to where we are on our on our machines and um, yeah so this is kind of um, I want you to open up Octave and play around with this a little bit I'll give you some um, things that you can do you can actually just create these M and N variables and um, mess around with doing some really easy computations and seeing what appears on the workspace Practice using the up keys and down keys to repeat your computations so that you don't have to rewrite them every time. Practice with putting semicolons and not putting semicolons to see how that um, has a conversation with you or stays quiet. And um, let me know if you have any questions.